It's with a heavy heart that we share the sad news of the passing of one of our colleagues and close friend of the producers and host of the Let's Do It Christway program, Brother Adolphus Smith, minister of the Avenue K Church of Christ in Fort Worth, Texas, passed from his earthly life to his reward on February 10, 2021, after a brief illness. Brother Smith's cooperative spirit, humble disposition, and quiet strength will be deeply missed by all who knew him. To his family and the church family at Avenue K, we want to express our deepest condolences and sincere sympathies. Our prayers to the Heavenly Father are that you might be blessed during these times with strength and comfort as only he can. May God bless you and keep you is our prayer. Uh, help me welcome to the stage uh, Brother Adolphus Smith. God bless you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Brother Bradshaw, for that uh, introduction. I could just sit here all the evening and listen to Brother Norris as he expounds to us from the Word of God. I will dispense with all of the other accolades. I'm glad to be here tonight, and I really appreciate the opportunity of being here. And I, I want to extend my uh, uh, appreciation to Brother Vic. You know, he, he, he's the, uh, one of the organizers of the TCCOM program that we're having here. And he's doing a fantastic job in, in, in that. He's keeping us busy, so we just appreciate that so very, very much. Now, <clears throat> I want to, I, I want to uh, let you know that I believe that the Bible is God's word. And I believe that very, very sincerely. Now, tonight, I want to try to help you to understand that many of you are more intelligent than you think you are. And I hope I can, as I go through my lesson tonight, you will understand why I said that. Because what we're going to be talking about tonight will be the simplicity of the gospel. The simplicity of the gospel. Now, and my proposition tonight is to help us to learn God's way and for you to understand that God's way can be understood by everyone. My objective is to point out that the honest, the honest seeker can know the right way if he wants to. Now, in Isaiah, the 35th chapter, and the verse is eight. Now, I will no doubt use several scriptures to try to help you understand where we are headed tonight. Now, we pay close attention to what the scriptures said. As Brother Nari said a few minutes ago, we're going to stay in the book. Isaiah, the 35th chapter, in the verse 8. Isaiah said in this particular chapter, Isaiah, 35th chapter, and the verse is 8. He says, A highway shall be there. In a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. When you read these scriptures, Isaiah says, a way shall be there, and no fools, no fools shall be there. And so most of us in here tonight, we have a 
pretty good understanding of what the Bible teaches us. I said a few minutes ago, I'm going to try to help you understand that you are more intelligent than you may think you are. We talk to many folk today, and they can tell you more about the church, and they don't even go. So we want to help you know that you understand what the Bible is saying, but you really have not committed yourself to what it says. And so then, the gospel of Christ was not intended for a few learned men or wise men, but for everyone. And every creature learned or unlearned. And that what is in, in, intended for everyone must be a simple, easy way to understand and applicable to all mankind. Yes, sir. It must be where everyone can lay hold on regardless of his or her scholastic in, endeavors or intellectual abilities. Therefore, making the gospel clear that every man who would come to the Father will and can come. Yes. Now, in that individual uh -huh. can have knowledge, clear knowledge of what he must do if he wants to be saved. Yes, well. And if he attend to that which is intended for him to know God's way, he can know. If he attends to what God has said in his book. Go as in our Galatians, Galatians, the first chapter, and verse 8. It's a familiar passage, and we often use in our preaching. Paul said, in this particular epistle, he says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ. But as we have said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be a curse. But I want you to look at verse 7. It says, If you are removed from another gospel, which is not another gospel, and he says, There be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. I invite you again to look at verse 7 again. I invite you again. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. We invite you to look at these particular scriptures again and see what the Bible says. So Paul is telling us that any man who wants to be saved can know what he must do if he wants to be saved. Because the gospel is not intended just for a few learned or unlearned men, but it's intended for everybody. And any man who wants to be saved can know what he or she must do in order to be saved. Now, Paul says, though we are an angel from heaven. Note what Paul says here. Now, Galatians gives us an apostolic, in a divine curse, and ought to be considered with great care. The intention of this particular curse is to preserve the gospel of Jesus Christ in its purity as the Lord gave it without any perversions and any impurities. It is to be preserved 
So I invite you again to look at the scripture. It's intended to make sure that any man, any man who preaches the gospel can preach the gospel and it also helps us to understand when you preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and preach it just like God gave it to us, then it is for the eyes of the gospel preacher to make them feel and beware of the awful responsibility of handling the word of God deceitfully and it is to to place a curse upon anybody who preaches at all who uses the word of God deceitfully. And so when we look at these particular passages of scriptures, we understand that this curse was intended for the gospel preacher to make sure they preach the word of God just as God has given it. And so we understand that many men, many preachers are more intelligent than they think they are because any gospel preacher who is able to preach the word, he knows when he preaches God's word like it's intended, he knows there's an awful punishment reserved for him who misuses God's word. Revelation 22nd chapter verse 18 says, I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the things that are written or the plagues that are written in this book. So Paul gives us in a polyp curse upon the preacher or the teacher who uses God's word deceitfully. Now, these sayings, these scriptures are full of meaning and they place a curse to warn the gospel preacher and those who will teach God's word of the terrible doom to those who will pervert or change the gospel. Jesus says, Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel. But he that believes is baptized shall be saved. There are those who are perverting the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he placed the curse, Paul, in Galatians. If any man uses God's word deceitfully, there is an awful curse awaiting him in the judgment. I invite you again to look at Galatians, the first chapter, in the verse 8. Paul says, But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than which we have preached, unto you, let him be a curse. That is what the scriptures says. You see, man has no right to change God's word. Today we have too many, too many gospel pimps all around our country in our neighborhood. We have gospel pimps in Houston, Texas, we have gospel pimps in Dallas, Texas. These men are perverting the gospel of Jesus Christ. John 3rd chapter verse 36 says, He that believes on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. Stop and think. 
of the often import of these words. They need no explaining. The terrible meaning is clear. He who believes not shall be condemned. He who preaches any other gospel shall be accursed. I think everyone in here who, who read and study God's word, know anything about God's, God's word, know exactly what these scriptures are saying. No one can go away and say that they don't understand what these words mean. See, you are intelligent, and you probably just not aware of how intelligent you are. <laughs> now, the Bible says, the Bible says, in Matthew the 15th chapter and verse 79, Jesus says, in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. You see, now, I want you to go with me now to Isaiah 29 chapter to see where many of us have placed our allegiance. Isaiah the 29th chapter and the verse is 13. The Bible says, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as these people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught, to get that, taught by the precept, taught by the precept of men. You see what the Bible is saying there? You see, men are perverting God's word. Men are teaching men what they want them to hear. You see, Isaiah said, they, they are taught by the precept of men. In the American Standard says, the precepts which had been taught them. You see, too many folk today are listening to what some two-legged men tell them. I just mentioned a few minutes ago, we have gospel pimps in our communities. We have them in Dallas. We have them in Houston. Gospel pimps who are teaching everything but what the Lord says. And too many folk or just like that mockingbird feeding his baby. A mockingbird, you ever see the mockingbird feeding his baby? He goes out, picks up some worms and something, and come back, and the baby's chicks in the nest, and their mouth's wide open. And they swallow whatever the mama puts in his mouth. And that's the way many folk are today. Supposed to be religious individuals, but they're swallowing whatever Somebody tell them. Isaiah, the 34th chapter, verse 16, says, Seek you out of the book and read. We have to study God's word in order that we might get on the right path. Now, some man may object, or somebody may object and say, uh, object to the gospel and say, Well, I've been looking for the right way for a long time. I've been seeking and I have not found it yet. The Lord did not intend for you to find if you regard, if you disregard his instructions. The Bible says, look in the book. Seek out the book of life and read. Timothy says, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of God. See, we've got to go to the book. Isaiah 35th chapter and verse 8 says, A highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. You see, God has given us a way. And God has so fixed it so when, when you find that way, you know it's the way. 
We have gospel preachers preaching every Sunday. Every Sunday. I know Brother Vic preaches the gospel. I know Brother White preaches the gospel. We preach the gospel at Avenue K. And we have folk who come every Sunday and they sit and they listen to the gospel message, but yet and still do, they do not attend to what thus said the Lord. And so when you have that kind of attitude, you will never find the right way. And so God has given us he's a way. It shall be a way of holiness. And once you find that way, you will know it's the right way. You'll know it. You know, I was just look, I was looking at the TV just the other day, and, and the Duke was on, in, on the, you know, the Duke called him John Wayne. You, you know, he was out there. Some of you may have seen it. And he had a young man with him, and a, and a snake come up in front of him. And the young man's fitting to shoot him. John Wayne said, don't shoot him, don't kill him. He's a gopher snake. He's a gopher snake. He, he helps. He, he, he gets rid of mice and all these kind of things. The young man asked John Wayne, he said, well, how do you know it's a good snake? John Wayne told him, I'll tell you. See, if you ever come across a rattlesnake, you'll know it. You'll know the difference between a rattlesnake and the gopher snake. And I say that to say this. When you sit and listen to all these gospel pimps, all them pretty smiles and all that kind of stuff, when you hear a gospel preacher preach, you'll know the truth. Jesus said you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. See, any man who wants to be saved when he studied God's word, he'll know because God said a highway shall be there. And God has given us a way and he gave us a way and he wants all men to be saved. And when you're in the way, you'll know that it's the truth. When you come into the audience of a Church of Christ congregation and the preachers are preaching God's word, you know. Nobody has to tell you anything. You know that man is teaching you the truth. Even though you may ignore it and it may go on. But I know when Brother White preaches the truth, People who sit and listen to him know he's telling the truth. He knows, they know he's preaching out of the book, out of the book. When Brother White preaches, his congregation, they know he's preaching the truth. Because if he was not preaching the truth, he still wouldn't be here. You know it. You know it. And so, Isaiah, a God's prophet, Look down the stream of time over 750 years ago and said, The wayfaring man, even the fool, the man who has less intelligence, the man who's not very smart, even that man will know of the truth. Jesus said, If you continue in my words, then are you my disciples. You will know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. You see, you are intelligent tonight. All you need to do is commit yourself to God's word. You need to do that. Now, some folk always argue about, well, how, if God has only one way, why is there so many churches? Why are there so many churches? Because I've been looking for the truth all his life. And one preacher says one thing, another says, says something else. You see, God, as I said earlier, did not intend for a man to find who would not regard his instruction. He said, he said why does, the objector says, why does God give one preacher a different message from the other preachers. Well, 
The difficulty then is not with what the message is. The difficulty rests with the messenger. You see, sometimes we listen to the wrong folk and we get our advice from the wrong individuals. See, when a man does not regard word's word, God's word, and where to find God's word is, you cannot blame the gospel preacher. The difficulty is with those who are listening to the wrong voice. Jesus said, seek you out of the book and read. Jesus said in Matthew 11, chapter verse 28, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all of these things be added unto you. Now, this ought to be the end of the controversy about those who are talking about, I've been looking for years and have not found it. You're looking in the wrong place. You're looking in the wrong place. You cannot find God with these smooth-talking preachers. Smiling. Everything they say, you got a big smile on the lip. You ain't going to find God with those particular individuals because God has given us a clear and full information on how to find. And when we go someplace else, don't be surprised if you don't find God. We have got to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. On the day of Pentecost, the people heard one message on the day of Pentecost. One message. And you know what? They were convicted in their heart. And they asked a question, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said, repent and be baptized. They heard one message. One message. And those individuals who were honest, who were looking for God, they repented of their sins. And I say tonight, if you are here and you're not a member of the Lord's church, you have heard two gospel messages. Well, Brother Norris preached. You heard him talk about God's word. Book, chapter, and verse. Book, chapter, and verse. And he wasn't up here smiling and going on even. He was telling you just like it is written in God's word. You see, you cannot place your salvation in the hands of two-legged men. You have got to obey God's word. On the day of Pentecost, the people heard one message. They asked the question, what shall we do? In one sentence, the apostle told them what to do. Every man and woman that heard and believed that one message that Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, Acts second chapter, they were baptized for the remission of their sin. No record of any seeker leaving there on the day of Pentecost. And I think there's about 17 or 18 nationalities there in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. No record of any seeker going away mourning, inquiring what else was to be done. The 3,000 heard and believed and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. In my conclusion, I want to invite you to Ephesians the fourth chapter. But I want you to take a second look at this divine curse that Paul said in Galatians, first chapter. You see, you see, Brother White, see, that's how you got Sister White. You took a second look. You took a second look. So I say, 
I say to you, if you're a visitor, take a second look at Paul, what Paul said. You see, take a second look. Because I believe that if you take a second look, you might find that you've been looking at the scriptures wrong. You see, take a second look. You see, because all I know, all I know is what the Bible says. And I believe with all of my heart that the Bible is the word of God. I believe that. And if you believe that the Bible is the, God of God, is the word of God, take a second look. Jesus said you shall know the truth and the truth shall make the book, make you see. John 5, 39, I think the scripture says, it says, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. But they, these are they which testify of me. I hope we consider these things. In my conclusion, I'd like to invite you now to Ephesians the fourth chapter. And let's look at a few scriptures here. They've already been quoted in, in, in our, uh, by our previous speakers. In Ephesians the fourth chapter, the Bible says here, there is one body and one spirit, even as you called in one hope of your calling. One body. What is that one body? Go with me now to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22. The Bible says, and had put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head of all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Ephesians 4, chapter verse 4 says there is one body. And the scriptures teaches us that Christ is the head over all things. Yes, sir. To the church, which is his body. So the church is the body of Christ. It doesn't talk about any other churches. The church is the body of Christ. I know we don't like that. We don't like that. But all I know is what the scripture says. All I know is what the scripture says. Take a second look. Take a second look. Then we go to Colossians chapter 1 and verse 18. Now look at the scriptures right here. It says here in Colossians 1 and he is the head of the body who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. The firstborn from the dead in all things. Now who is the head or who is the firstborn from the dead? Jesus Christ. Now, when you find that, who is the first one to death, then you have it. Just open up your heart. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the first one from the dead, that in all things. Now, Jude tells us, beloved, when I gave all Disney right unto you concerning the common salvation. What is the common salvation? It has to deal with the Ephesians 4 in verse 4, there is one body, even you call one hope of your calling. You see, all we need to do is open up our hearts and quit listening to what these two-legged pimps are telling us. I hope we understand what the scriptures are saying. See, I'm not here to try to make anybody feel good. I'm here to try to help you to be saved. And that's our responsibility. That's every gospel preacher's job in here to try to help you to be saved. We're not here to try to make you feel good where you are. We are here to try to help you understand God's word. I said a few minutes ago, all of us, most of you who, who go to church, you have a good understanding of what the God wants you to do in order to be saved. But sometimes, sometimes we have to be real with you. Be real. 
We're not here to make you feel good. Now, the scripture teaches us here in Colossians 1, 24, and he said, in Ephesians 4, there is one body and one faith. Then he said, Jude said that we ought to do what? Contend for the, contend for the faith. In Colossians chapter 1, in the verse 2, the book said, if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, you, which you have, hope of the gospel, which you have heard, which you have received, which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. You see, Paul spent a lifetime, and sometimes we call him a globe-trotting apostle. He spent a lifetime trying to turn people's hearts to sin. Now, Colossians 1.13 says, Thanks be to God who has translated us from the power of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. There's only two kingdoms in this world, church. Kingdom of Satan and the kingdom of devil. Of the devil. Don't you want to be in the kingdom of God? Thanks be to God who has translated us from the power of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. I hope we've said something tonight to stir your remembrance, help you to understand there is a way to man that seems right. That seems right. But, but, the end of it, take a second look. Take a second look. We must humble ourselves before God. Understand, church, that this apostolic curse it is a divine curse. And it ought to be considered with great I marvel that you are so soon removed. I hope we've said something to help you understand tonight and, 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 and understand that God wants you to be saved. And I believe, like Timothy said, all of us can be saved. He said, if one mediator between God and man, and that man is Jesus Christ. If you want to be saved, you're going to have to come by Jesus Christ. And Jesus says, upon this rock, I will build my church in the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So I invite you tonight to take a second look because if you're ever going to be saved, you are going to have to study God's word. You're going to have to believe it. And I believe with all of my heart, I believe that the Bible is the word of God. All I know, all I have is to help you, try to help you understand that God's way is the right way. He said a highway should be there, even a fool. You see, see all the trouble God went through to try to save you, help you to be saved? He has put a highway there. And that highway is for, I was doing some study on that, and it has to deal with those individuals who uh, don't have very much education, who just a pathfinder, and they're there, just look, and when they come up on that way, they know it's God's way. That's why I say some of us in here are more intelligent than we think we are. See, you know, you know that God's way is the best way. But you're just going to be like some of those folk in the Bible, just stubborn. Just stubborn. Just don't want to give in to your beliefs, you see. I could tell you a story about another case like that. When my grandmother was, was alive and she was t t t teaching me or telling me about some of her family trees when they became members of the church. 
but I don't have time to tell you about it. But you, you talk about that to my grandmother a long, long time ago. And she told me how she became a Christian. And I look at folk today. I listen to a lot of preachers, good preachers, like Brother White, like Brother Glasgow, Brother Norris. And she was telling me. And I wonder, how in the world can folks sit and listen to the gospel? She said she was in a meeting one time with Brother Keeble. Way back in East Texas. You know, and she's and I wonder how in the world the folk can listen to gospel preachers preaching the word of God and still refuse to be baptized. It's something to think about. God bless you. God bless you. I hope we've said something to help you by way of uh, by way of the invitation. You need to come to Jesus. Jesus says we must hear God's word. Believe it, repent of our sins, confess Jesus Christ to be the Son of God, and be buried in the water of baptism for the remission of your sins. And the Lord will add you to his church. His church. We thank God that God has translated us from the power of darkness into the kingdom of his dear Son. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you.